Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to talk about cause and effect. If you're new here, my name is Douglas Johnson. I am a certified yoga teacher, an ordained minister, and if you're interested in things like spirituality and manifestation, you are in the right place. Before I get into the talk, I do want to thank all of my patrons on Patreon. They allow me to provide this content free of charge to the public. So if you'd like to pay it forward, if you'd like to become a part of that community that supports this teaching and these talks, please check out the links below. On Patreon, you can do that on a monthly basis, um, and you can also do one-time donations through PayPal or Venmo. Once again, thank you to all of those who support. If you don't want to do a financial uh, contribution, you can also support by sharing, liking, subscribing, and commenting on YouTube. All right, let's get into the talk. So today I wanted to share a passage from one of my favorite Zen teachers, Muso Soseki or Muso Kokushi. And this is uh, a book that I've lived with for a very, very long time. It's called Dream Conversations, and it's a very profound book, uh, along with things like the Bhagavad Gita and, of course, the miracles. It's one of the texts that really I find no exhaustion to the wisdom that it contains. Every time I pick it up and I read it, I find something new, a deeper level of understanding and meaning. So I wanted to share a passage with you today because it relates a little bit with what I was talking about last time, which is meaning. So cause and effect, meaning, these are things that we very often, uh, they go together a lot of times. So if something happens, I very often say, well, that happened because of this. That means this. So even though cause and effect, meaning, they aren't technically the same, they're very, very closely related. So one of the things that we want to do, whether we're on a spiritual path or we are trying to learn manifesting, is we have to soften our attachment to what our mind tells us is the meaning of something or the cause and effect relationship with something. So I wanted to share this passage from the Zen Buddhist tradition, because those are my roots, and I think he does a good job of explaining uh, what's going on, at least on one level of understanding. Okay, so again, this is from Muso Soseki's book, Muso Kokushi. The book is called Dream Conversations in English, um, and it's still available, it's still uh, in publication. And the title of this chapter is called Causes. Causes are complex and have different time scales. The efforts of the individual are not the sole determining factor in the individual's condition in life. Because everyone is part of the nexus of society and nature in the continuum of time, it is common for people to attribute causes wrongly because of misperception of real relationships. Every cause is the effect of something else, and every effect is the cause of something else. What may seem a curse may be a blessing, and what may seem a blessing may be a curse. Hardship is a blessing when it spurs effort and development. Ease is a curse when it increases complacency and self-indulgence. So hopefully you can receive that teaching. For me, it's a very, very powerful teaching and it very much lives in the Buddhist perspective where um, our suffering and our hardship can actually be used as fuel for enlightenment, for seeking the truth and understanding, where we use what seem like or what we are interpreting as difficulty in this world as fuel for 
developing ourselves and seeking something beyond this reality. In terms of manifestation, it goes back to what I was talking about last week. Um, and I believe I quoted from A Course in Miracles in that, where it said, nothing means essentially what I think it means. Now, most of us will default to, without even realizing it, we just default to believing we understand cause and effect and we understand the nature of reality and we understand what things mean and what things, uh, what's going on. So in order to get away from this actually requires training and both in Buddhism, in yoga, and in manifestation, this requires mind training. And I'd say this is probably the thing that people resist the most. People, um, some people resist any kind of training. They, they just don't want to change at all. And then they wonder why their suffering continues. So in order to change what is, we need to change ourselves. Now, some people are willing to change the way, uh, they're willing to change their body. They're willing to exercise, they're willing to work out, they're willing to get up earlier, um, go to bed earlier, do whatever it is, change their diet. But what I find is people are much more reluctant to change their thinking. And I think that's because uh, thinking is really um, where the ego shows up the strongest and where our beliefs, we get very, very attached to our beliefs. I think we can get more attached to our beliefs than our body identity. Some people struggle with body identity, but I think many, many more people struggle with thought and emotional identity. So for most of us to break out of this, it requires some kind of technique or training in order to soften those attachments. The first technique I'll mention is one that I've been mentioning forever, which is meditation. When meditation is practiced properly, it creates some space between our true nature, our awareness, and our thoughts and beliefs. And we can see that we can think a thought or believe a thought that isn't true. And we can feel an emotion that doesn't actually relate or isn't actually helpful in a situation. So I'll share from my own life this morning, I had a situation that brought up a very negative feeling or emotion. And where I am with manifestation is I'm learning to begin to not allow a negative thought and a negative feeling to throw me off of my thinking about what I'm trying to manifest. And in the past, it definitely did. So in the past, if I was trying to manifest something or think a new way about reality, and then reality showed me the same old pattern, which according to manifestation theory comes from the past. And like Muso Soseki says, what's showing up in my present moment, it, it may have nothing to do with what I'm thinking it does, right? The cause might have nothing to do with what I'm thinking the cause is. But it's just sort of the way our brain is wired. It's sort of its default mode. Um, but the important thing to realize is we don't have to operate on the default mode. In fact, for most of us, the happiest and the most fulfilled life that we can live doesn't come from living in the default mode. So I recognize this, my body definitely reacted, meaning I had an emotional response to this negative situation. And then my, as a result, my thought, my mind, which is the human's defense mechanism for lack of a better way of putting it. Humans, um, you know, porcupine has its quills, uh, saber tooth tiger has its, its um, canines. Humans have their brain, humans, it's through thinking and predicting and all of these things that we've gotten to, the, to where we are in terms of the dominant species on this planet. So in a sense, the thinking, nothing wrong with it. It is where we're going to default when we feel threatened, when we feel 
bad, whatever it is. But what we want to learn through these teachings is that there are many things in many situations where thinking actually can't help us and it actually can harm us. And when it comes to manifestation, this is definitely the case. Now, the ideal is not to stop thinking, but it is to become aware of what we are assuming, what we believe, what we think, and again, to choose another way of thinking about it, to choose a different interpretation. In last week's talk, I did talk about Byron Katie and uh, how she, in her work, she has you reverse a assumption that you have, a thought that you have about something, and see how that reversal is just as true or more true than the one you're thinking. And this is reality. We give things their meaning. We interpret things in a certain way. We think we understand cause and effect. And the quote I gave you today from Muso Soseki, I hope, illustrates we don't actually understand cause and effect. And like A Course in Miracles, what the quote I gave you last week, it's showing we don't understand meaning either. Nothing means what we think it means. So if someone is very critical of me and I take that to mean that I have no value or I'm not loved or my manifestation isn't working or the world is a difficult and hard place or people are mean to me or I'm a victim, I'm giving it that meaning and I don't have to give it that meaning. There are people who encounter very, very difficult circumstances and they just decide that they are going to give it a different meaning. And so the first step in that is sort of realizing that the meaning, we're the one giving the meaning, right? We're the one ascribing the cause and effect and that we can stop doing that. I'd say that's the first step because if we, we don't realize that, we're just going to believe our story. And that's what, again, this is our default for most of us. No, I just see reality as it is. And my mind is just reporting to me on reality. Um, if someone doesn't like me, that means there's something wrong with me. That means um, I'm not loved. I'm not approved of whatever it might be. And very often these are very deep. These are very unconscious. And we'll feel them in our body. You could say our unconscious lives in our body. And we know what we're believing unconsciously because we feel it. So if someone is critical of you and there is no reaction in your body, then you can rest assured that your unconscious doesn't believe what that person is saying. And the example I like to give is if I come to you and I criticize your hair color and it's not the color of your hair. So let's presume you have black hair like me and I come over and I say, you know, I really don't like the platinum blonde on you. It, it really doesn't suit you. You would be like, what are you talking about? And you would laugh, right? Because you understand that that's not reality. That's not what you believe or understand to be reality. So this is how it is with people who are critical of us or situations that seem to contradict what it is that we are trying to manifest or create or the reality that we're trying to live in. A Course in Miracles is very clear about this, that in order for us to reach the ultimate, we have to deny what our senses are seeing and reporting on um, at least at one stage, because otherwise we will just believe our kind of default story of things. So this is rather involved. It's actually, I think, a real challenge for many people to disengage from our default belief system. I can't say whether that is completely like biologically the default or if it's learned from society or parents, uh, I'm not really sure to be honest. Um, and I don't really think it's that important. I think what's important to understand is we can through practice disengage. So again, I think the first step is what I'm sharing with you here that we need to understand that we don't actually understand cause and effect, that we don't 
actually, things don't mean actually what we believe them to mean. That would be the first step, that softening of our attachment to the meanings and the relationship of cause and effect that we believe is truth. Okay, so that's a very important first step. Whether you're trying to manifest or whether you're trying to be enlightened, you need to first be willing to say, okay, I don't really understand reality. The, the version of cause and effect and meaning that I'm using right now is not the only version, right? And then I'd say the next step, especially if you're trying to manifest, I'd say if you're just trying to be enlightened, that might be enough, is just to keep questioning your meaning of reality and just letting that go. If you're trying to manifest, the next step would be replacing the beliefs with the beliefs that you would like to install instead. And as those beliefs work their way deep into the unconscious, eventually the unconscious begins to manifest in reality what it is that you've been affirming for. So in a sense, very, very simple, but like I've said in many, many other talks, simple does not automatically mean easy. For many things I've encountered in spirituality, the most powerful techniques are the simplest and the most revealing truths and concepts are the simplest. Like I shared a few weeks ago about absolute non-duality and God is, okay? It really, that's the ultimate truth from these spiritual traditions that there's nothing but God, right? But what do we think God means? All these layers of meaning come into that. And so there can, again, be a lot of resistance. There could be a lot of confusion. Well, if all there is is God, why am I experiencing negative effects? Why am I suffering? Why is there, why does there seem to be so much suffering in the world? So again, this is where these practices come in, suspending the idea that I actually can know if someone else is suffering and know what that looks like and know um, what's going on here, right? Because if I'm watching a film, a movie, and I believe that the movie is real and I see Brad Pitt get killed and I think that's reality because it, I saw it, right? I saw it. It was on the screen. It was there. I think the film is reality. And then I see Brad Pitt in person and I but you're dead. I saw you got killed. It was terrible. It was awful. Why don't they put those people in jail? Another example, right? The, the perpetrator, let's say I run into the perpetrator who killed Brad Pitt in the movie. And then I'm like, well, why is this person still free? Why are they alive? I'm, I'm going to take justice into my own hands. I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to kill them or put them in prison. Again, this is confusion. And this is what both the manifestation community and the spiritual community, at least at the level that I work at, this is what they're trying to communicate, is what we are perceiving, the meaning we are giving to things, um, the reality that we're giving to things, especially the negative things, this is not the only way to perceive what is going on. So again, if I'm watching a film and I believe that's real, and then somebody comes along and says, you know what, that, that actually isn't real. Then that's going to shift how I feel about what I saw, right? Let's say that again, I'm watching something and it's, it's uh, portrayed as a documentary. And I believe that these are true events. It's exactly how it went. And it's filmed as a documentary and I am just buying it hook, line and sinker. And then I come across one of the characters again, in real life, and I, I'm just incensed. I'm angry because this, this uh, documentary was telling about a great injustice. And then let's say I'm in the middle of that. I'm just, I know what justice is and, and this isn't right. And then someone comes along and says, hey, you know what? That was actually fictional. Uh, they made that whole thing up, that it actually isn't true. Then again, it shifts my perspective. So this is challenging.
because as human beings, we are our default and what we're taught is to rely on our senses, to rely on our brain's capacity to create and understand meaning. Most of these meanings were given to us when we were too young to decide whether that was a meaning that we wanted to take on. Okay, so most of us, in a sense, were brainwashed into the meaning that we give things. The power you have now as an adult human being is to decide that you don't want to believe what you were taught anymore. Why would you do that? Because what you believe isn't actually serving you. It's not actually allowing you to live the life that you want to live, that you deserve to live as a part of this manifestation. So again, that's very much a choice that you have to make. A great text that I recommend that you read in this direction is The Four Agreements. So in this very small book, he does a really great job of A, helping to explain how um, we enter into agreements before we're even aware that that's what we're doing in this life. And then those agreements will manifest certain outcomes for us. And then he says that we can adopt new agreements and he suggests four agreements that can completely change our experience of reality. So very, very powerful book and I do recommend you check it out. All right, everyone, as always, I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, comment and share. And again, if you'd like to become part of the community that helps support this teaching, please check out the links below. Until next time, everybody, thank you so much for listening. Namaste and have a beautiful, beautiful day.